this is Ricardo, and I want to go over a quick guide on how to live stream. A lot of people have been requesting it, and I figured now would be a good time to do it right before CETA and the MDT coming up, coming up next weekend. So there's a few things that you need to, before you get started. One is a YouTube account. If you haven't made that, you just go to youtube.com and make an account. I can show you that here right now. It looked pretty trippy for a second, but I've made a new account on YouTube, and what you need to do from there is go to the Creator Studio. You do that by clicking your profile up in the corner. You click Creator Studio. Then you just click on Live Events, which is in this drop down over here by Video Manager. And you want to click this Enable Live Stream button. What you do from there is uh, you have to set up something about your profile. They probably want a Google Plus profile because they love Google Plus. You just continue with that. Then you need to do a verification, and you type in your phone number, which for right now I'll need to make the screen blank and block that off because I don't want to show you my phone number. After that, you get a text to your cell phone. This is all just to make sure you're a real person and not just spamming them with random stuff. And from that text message, you type in the six digit code. Then you just click submit. And after that, you should get a screen like this saying that your account has been verified. After that, you have to agree to some terms and conditions. They don't want you to play music because they don't like that. They actually have an algorithm that automatically scans everything you do. And if you have music that's on there or copyrighted content that's on there, it'll mute it. And we don't really want that, which we'll go over a little bit later about how to either get rid of that, any music that might be on the content, or how to deal with any of those DMCA requests. After that, you're ready to create a live event. There's a few ways to do that. One, which I think is the easiest, least demanding way, is that after you have a camera and microphone ready to go, you just use Hangouts on Air. So to do that, you click Start Create a Live Event. You title it. You can say when it's starting. This doesn't really matter. You're not really bound to it. You can add some stuff to the description. You can add some tags. Really helpful if you're trying to search for stuff later. And the last thing you want to do is figure out what level of privacy you want. You can make, make it private, which means that you have to manually type out who can see it. You can unlist it, meaning anyone that has a link can see it. And you can make it public, meaning that everyone can see it. For now, I'm going to unlist it, just so people don't really see it. But it won't really matter. After that, you just select Quick, which is using Google Hangouts on Air. Click Go Live Now. It says Ready to Go. You hit OK. It'll open a new window with Hangouts on Air. And it'll look for your camera, microphone, etc., and what you need to do and you'll see this loading screen down here. You can change what camera it using, uses by clicking the cog up here. I don't have any other camera on my computer, so it won't really change it, but I can change the microphone. Right now I'm using this microphone on my headset, but I can also click this blue snowball, and it'll change to the blue snowball that I have over here. It's that giant microphone that you always see me carry. I think it's a really good quality microphone for debates especially, because it picks up pretty much everything, which in an office setting, maybe not so good, but when you're dropping it in a room, it's really good, and if you have it really close, you'll get really good audio quality, much like you heard at the NDT. You can just click Save to those settings and start the broadcast. You can broadcast up to eight hours. You know, only need four for a debate, so it should be good. And right now it's broadcasting through Hangouts on Air. And right now it's actually going through the blue snowball. Uh, so this has a few advantages. One, that it's really easy to use. There's some like random editing. Maybe the warm filter is better or the enhanced filter. But there's a few random filters. You can be edgy and make it black and white if you want. This is what the original shot looks like and this is just to adjust some of the colors. This will show that it's live and right now it's muted. Never mind, it wasn't muted. If it was, so this mutes or unmutes the microphone. If you for some reason need to turn off the screen, turn it black. You click that button. 
and we'll just switch it to this view and this is what they'll see through the YouTube link. And it's back. Bandwidth usage. You can adjust the quality based on how good your internet is or how much stress you want to put on the bandwidth. Auto HD is probably the best option. But right now it's switched for some reason. You can also invite people to the Hangouts which is pretty cool. Uh, one version of the live stream that you could do is you invite everyone to the hangout and somehow adjust all of the audio levels that way and just adjust the camera angles based on what's their laptop what's on their laptop but that's maybe something for a different time uh, because there's just a lot of logistical issues with that but maybe this could also be a really good way to have online debates or have a good platform for online debating so when you're done with the event and um, everything's done through Hangouts on Air. You just click the Stop Broadcast button, and it stops the broadcast. You'll see a little message up here, and you're good to go. You can also play with a lot of these features to the side, like you can show Google Docs, which would be good for showing the speech doc. You can uh, have some fun effects, put a mustache on people, there's a control room, hiding audio, having large guests. A lot of this stuff is useful for later on, but not really necessary for a debate. All you need to do is get the camera set up and maybe mute the microphone when it's not needed. No, no, now I'm going to click leave call because it's not really necessary. And we can just close everything. So that's the simplest way to get started through open broadcast, er, sorry, through for live streaming. A much more advanced way, which I prefer because it gives you a lot more leeway with um, production and other things because you can honestly show whatever you want on the screen is using open broadcaster software as you can see you, you'll get this like infinity view right here this is kind of the overall software but first you probably have a question of where we'll get it so it's pretty easy we can just go to google and search open broadcaster software click that and now there's a Mac version, which is pretty cool, meaning that people with MacBooks can also stream. And there's a Windows 7 or 8 version. Just click that, downloads it, you install it. You might have to install DirectX. Um, that's just going to their website or .NET framework. You just Google that, go to Microsoft's website and download it. And be careful what you click because they also might want you to install the Bing toolbar, which no one really wants. So. Just avoid doing that. Make sure you check the right boxes or make sure you pay attention when you're going through the next steps. I already have it installed and running and I really want to just want to run through a lot of the features. You can see that nifty screen you saw in the background earlier. You can see a lot of stuff basically. But that's not really what we're focusing on here. Uh, so let's minimize that while we're here. Fancy background, right? So there's a few interesting things we can do here. and Let's see if I can make this a lot bigger for clarity's sake though. This screen will get kind of trippy. Uh, maybe you'll get used to it, maybe you won't. So there's a few settings that you have to go through in order to get started. So you can see if I click this monitor capture button, it doesn't show the monitor anymore. Uh, so let's just start from the beginning. Before a debate, you would open this up. You would then want to add a camera probably. So a camera according to open broadcaster software is called a video capture device. Let's call this the camera. Hit OK. Your device is whatever camera it is. I have the HD Pro 9 C920, which is a camera I like a lot. It's got pretty good colors, looks good, gets a pretty wide angle. Hit OK. It should pop up just like that. Now, this looks a little big. Maybe you want to throw some production in later. So you can just edit the scene. If you want to make this smaller, you just click Edit Scene. You see this red outline, and from there you can drag and drop the size. So for right now, I'll just make it take up that really trippy screen that we saw before. And that should look good. But in reality, this is what it looks like uh, on the controller software. So after that, we've edited the scene a little bit. Next thing you want to do is you probably want to make sure your microphone's working. Best way to do that is you see this little green coming up and down. That means the microphone's working. You want to have this, make sure it's grayed out. Otherwise, people will start hearing everything that's on your desktop. All right, so now we need to run through a few settings of so we can set up a live stream. 
Uh, I, we've already set up a camera. You can see it by me clicking camera. Should show up just like that. And the current view I have set up right now will make it look kind of interesting. Kind of goes into infinity. Uh, but from here we can just go to settings. So there's a few th important areas here. General, you don't really need to do anything here. Encoding, uh, you probably want it x264. Use CBR, which means constant bitrate. CBR padding lets it go up or down in case there's an issue with network settings or issue with the network overall. Then you have the max bitrate. YouTube has some guidelines. In general, you'll probably have this around 2000 for 720p. 1200 for 480, 800 if the hotel internet starts to be start, starts to not like how much um, data you're pushing through. Then you just click apply. You go to broadcast settings. So right now it's in live stream mode. Set set up to YouTube, and it has a stream key. So this is probably the most important part: getting the stream key. To do that, you go to YouTube. click your uh, account and I have a different account right now it's my main account I'm actually gonna go ahead and sign out and sign into my other one which there it is alright go to the creator studio go to video manager and hey that's a live event that we did earlier so let's create a new live event uh, actually, there's already one created for us. So from there, we go to the test stream. Click on this stream name. This is the stream key that we want. Select it. Copy it. Paste it in. And that's your stream key. And usually, you want the primary YouTube ingest server. But if there's issues with the primary one, you can always select a backup, and it should work. Uh, YouTube has a lot of servers usually not an issue. Let's do no resolution downscale. Um, Alright, so that's video. You can set the resolution. You generally want to set it to what you're streaming through, so it's not really that big a deal. Otherwise, you set it to your screen size or what the camera is streaming to. Usually it's 1280. That's not 1280. By 720. Aspect radio shows 16 by 9. Usually if that's right, if it's 16 by 9, it means that you put the right numbers in. Uh, that's just the ratio of height to width. Uh, sorry, width to height. Bring it back to what it was before. Apply. Audio. Uh, I showed this a little bit earlier. Maybe. Uh, sorry, I didn't show this a little bit earlier. I actually did a whole take, but realized that the screen wasn't really showing the settings I wanted to show. So had to redo all of this. So here you can select whatever microphone you want. Select the, select the cameras, the snowball, or the default graphics card, or audio card. Um, hotkeys, pretty useful if you want to um, start changing a bunch of scenes, start, stop the stream, mute it on the fly, just have a quick button for. You just set that up that way. Advanced, don't really worry about it unless in the broadcasting settings, there's like some red text down here. But you don't really need to change anything here. Click sync encoder. Also, I've never used it. Not really important. Microphone noise gate. That's if you want the microphone to turn on after a certain noise threshold has been passed. It probably won't work too well in debates because there's already a lot of noise. So you'd have to set it pretty high. So sometimes you might not get noise through. And then there's a scene switcher, which automatically switches through scenes. And I think you can set a hotkey to switch through the scenes, just cycle through them which could be pretty useful, but you can also set hotkeys through in specific scenes, uh, which is what I did at the NDT when I was controlling it from my phone. So that's pretty much all of the settings. In general, you'll probably look at encoding, broadcasting settings, video, and audio the most. After you have all that set up, you're pretty much good to go. You just have a camera, and after you hit start streaming, which is this button right here, I should probably show the window, it's this thing, start recording. So after you hit start streaming, after you hit start streaming, you should be able to go to YouTube, go to the live control room, and 
you should see the stream status that's loading right now being good. And from there, you just hit the up and you just cycle through it until you get to the go live button or start streaming button. After that, you live and you're good to go. Uh, if open broadcaster software starts dropping frames, if you decide to stop it, this will still be there. So you can restart it whenever you want. Uh, to find the link, you just click the view on watch page button and there you have a link. And that's pretty much how you get it running on YouTube. There's a few other production things you can do, which really is just adding some images. So if I want to throw in the screen background that you saw earlier, I just click that, that adds the image. I want to throw some texts like this is a debate, that's good. And I'll switch it to the camera. And this is what you might see in a debate. You click this edit scene button, you can make things a lot bigger or smaller. Select that red box, let's delete that. Probably not useful. So you can move the camera around if you want. Make it bigger, smaller. Make the text really big, make it really small. Whatever you want to do. Any type of production. You can also add windows. Uh, that's how I add a timer to the scene. And that's how you see you change the transparency settings. And really whenever you add any of this, so you add some text, you name the text, and then you enter the text right there. Change the color, add an outline, stuff like that. Um, it probably helps if I show it. So you right click, add text, name it wherever you want. Then you type the text in down here, that's what's shown. And then select the font, color, background color. You can use an outline, make it bigger. Generally, I use four, and that's what the text. That's the text that shows up. Hit cancel, and if you want to add an image, you right-click image, hit OK, name it wherever you want, find your picture, and you should be good to go. So that's some general production stuff. If you want to get into more advanced stuff, like how I got the uh, team logos together, and how I got all that other cool stuff together for the NDT. Uh, I could talk to you individually. I basically did it mostly. I did it in PowerPoint, exported the image, and threw an image into the debate. You can also get pretty fancy with overlays if you're good at Photoshop, which could make stuff look pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of eSports application. Uh, there's a lot of eSports studios that have a lot of these fancy overlays, a bunch of other cool stuff. It could, you could, you could really make an awesome stream that has like notable quotes that pop up every once in a while from the debate, has some like instant replay highlights during cross acts, has some overall commentary. The sky's the limit really with live streaming and stuff, but this is just getting started, some basics. And a lot of this production stuff you can through, do through OBS, or you can even seek other alternatives like XSplit or um, Wi I think it was Wirecast. Um, which costs money. The advantage of this is that it's completely free. So that's a quick rundown of how to live stream with the basic let's just get started, get a camera, get a microphone into a debate and go through Hangouts on Air. And then the slightly more advanced using open broadcast software to control what's shown in the scene, what cameras you use, uh, if you want to use multiple cameras or not, if you want to have multiple production, if you want to show a timer on the screen, that's what Open Broadcaster, that's why we would choose to use Open Broadcaster software in conjunction with YouTube instead of just Hangouts on Air. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to email me, hit me up on Facebook, uh, whatever. I, I'll throw, I won't throw my email in the, in the description, but I'll throw the links to OBS download, uh, I'll throw the OBS download link in there, and maybe a few other resources in general on how to live stream and a bunch of useful stuff with that. And otherwise, uh, if you really want to find my email, you'll see it on my judge philosophy. Um, I just makes it harder for bots to find it. I get less spam if I just don't post it in the description. Uh, otherwise, I guess you could email gtdebatestream at gmail.com and my gmail. My email is r-i-s-a-e-n-z at gmail.com. All right. Good luck streaming. Hopefully there's a lot up for the NDT and CETA.